Okay, the next functional group we're going to look at is the alcohol functional group. Uh, you have to be aware that like the alkanes and hydrocarbons in general, you can burn alcohols. And when you do, they will form carbon dioxide and water in a simple combustion reaction. The only chemistry you need to know about them is how they react under oxidation. And to do that, you have to first of all understand that there are three types of alcohol. They're called primary, secondary, and tertiary. The primary alcohol has a CH2OH, so in other words, the OH is on the end of the chain. The secondary has a CHOH, where the OH is in the chain itself, and the tertiary will replace that hydrogen by another carbon and have this as the functional group, okay? So CH2OH is a primary, CHOH is a secondary, and COH is a tertiary. Now, when you try and oxidize these, these three different alcohols, they behave differently. The common oxidizing agent that we use is either acidified manganate, H+, MnO4-, or acidified dichromate, which is this. And if you ever need the half equations for these, they're on page 10 of the data book, quite close to the bottom because the oxidizing agents are close to the bottom, the good oxidizing agents. Right, so what happens if you oxidize these with these reagents? Well, what happens to the primary alcohol is that it takes away hydrogen. Remember, one of the early definitions of oxidation is the removal of hydrogen. And the primary alcohol becomes an aldehyde. If you do the same with the secondary alcohol, that incidentally would be a double bond to the oxygen. I'll show you on this one. If you do it with the secondary alcohol, you will create a double bond, and this now has become a keto. With the tertiary, because there's no second hydrogen, then it's impossible to actually remove that. So tertiary alcohols do not oxidize. Coming back to these, so the primary gives an aldehyde, the secondary gives a ketone. Now for the secondary, that's the end of the line. The ketone is as far as it can go because there's no hydrogen there. The fact there's still a hydrogen there allows the aldehyde to further oxidize. And what happens is you've got at the moment this group, you've got C, H, O in the aldehyde. You can now turn it into C, O, O, H, which means it can become a carboxylic acid. So the aldehyde is not the end of the, of the line. It can further oxidize the carboxylic acid. Now this is a very, very effective way of distinguishing between the primary and the secondary alcohol because the aldehyde can further oxidize and the ketone can't. So if I was to take the aldehyde and treat it with one of these, the aldehyde would take away the purple color there and end up pale pink, and take away the orange color there and turn it green. But the ketone won't do that. Still staying on the subject of the oxygen containing compounds, let's quickly show you the chemistry of the carboxylic acids because they don't have a huge amount of chemistry. Carboxylic acids which we'll represent as RCOOH. R, incidentally, is commonly used, rest of molecule. Carboxylic acids will react with bases like sodium hydroxide to become RCOONA and H2O. Now, this is simply an acid base reaction making salt plus water, which you may remember from last year's chemistry. So carboxylic acids behave like ordinary acids, but if you remember unit three, they're very weak acids, much weaker than acids like hydrochloric or sulfuric. They also undergo a reaction. Again, they're acids. So if you react them with a carbonate, like say sodium carbonate, then again, they will form the salt 
RCONA plus carbon dioxide plus water. That's not specifically mentioned in the syllabus, but there was a question on it in an exam, so I mentioned it to you. The reason I'm saying it is basically because when you, um, when you add sodium carbonate to a carboxylic acid, then the fact it produces carbon dioxide means you see fizzing. And therefore, it's a good way of showing that an acid is present. The third and final reaction to carboxylic acids, remember we also have esters, and if you react a carboxylic acid with an alcohol, then they will react, it's a reversible reaction, and you will get R, C, O, O, R dash. Now I've indicated R dash just to show it may or may not be the same as R, and then H2O is the other product. Now this is a condensation reaction because when you add the two together, water is formed as a byproduct. And again, you need to know the different types of reaction that can take place. So this is condensation, this is acid base, this is acid carbonate, this is condensation. Some books will use the word esterification, but the syllabus doesn't specifically mention that word. It's pretty obvious what it means, esterification, making an ester. And you always make an ester from a carboxylic acid and an alcohol. Now there's hardly any organic pathways left, so I'm going to continue rather than start a new video. The only functional group we have left to worry about, uh, actually the only two left to worry about, is the amine. Now the amine, R-N-H-2, first thing you need to know about the amine is it's a base. And when it goes into water, it forms RNH3 plus and OH minus. So just like the carboxylic acids are the organic acids, weak acids, the bases, sorry, the amines are the organic bases. And again, weak bases. Okay. Ammonia obviously is similar. R simply replaces one of the hydrogens of ammonia to give that product there. The other thing amines can do, and this comes into polymer chemistry, if we take RNH2 and add R-COOH, what we will produce is, this is an amine, this is a carboxylic acid, we will produce R-COO. Now the hydrogen, the, the OH goes from there, the hydrogen goes from there, so we will end up with R-C-O-O-N-H-R and H2O. This is another condensation reaction. We have taken away water, OH from there. Show you. OH has gone from there. Hydrogen from there. Just like it did in the ester esterification reaction, Water is being produced, so this again is a condensation reaction. Uh, what we have formed, of course, is an amide as well as the water. The final reaction, I'm going to stay in pink, is of nitriles. This is the very last reaction. If we take a nitrile and we add hydrogen to it, this requires the presence of a catalyst. Again, you can use something like nickel. Remember, we added hydrogen with a nickel catalyst to turn an alkene into an alkane. This, again, is a similar sort of reaction. You will end up with RCH2NH2. So we've added the hydrogen across the triple bond. We needed two of those molecules to create that, and the nitrile has become an amine. Now, this is an addition reaction because we're adding something to the triple bond. But since we are adding hydrogen, it's also called reduction. Again, the early definition of reduction was the gain of hydrogen. Now that finishes the organic pathways. Now, I'm sorry guys, I know it's a lot. And the only way you're gonna do it is by practicing. Again, what I'm gonna do is put into the questions book that I'm gonna put on the website, lots of 
you know, how do you turn this into this? How do you turn that into that? And it'll also test your naming of the compounds and what function groups are there and what kind of reaction is taking place. Is it substitution? Is it addition? Is it condensation? Um, I forgot to mention the reaction where the haloalkane became the alkene, where you took away the HCl, that's called elimination. Yet another word. It's the opposite of addition. Okay, addition is where you add something to a double bond. Elimination is where you take something away and create a double bond. But you've also got substitution, oxidation, reduction, condensation. You need to be able to identify which reactions are which and what type of reaction they are. So, plenty of practice needed, guys.